When we think of battles in the West, we usually think of US troops against Native American warriors or a law posse against criminals. We usually don't think of the Spanish. When we think of the Spanish in the Americas, we commonly think of the conquest of the Aztecs and Inca. We also might think of the famed California missions a little too, but that's about it. But the Spanish were the first Europeans to try to explore the West. Actually, it would have been north and northeast for them. The empty-handed Coronado expedition and the disastrous voyage of Juan Cabrillo convinced Spanish authorities to proceed more cautiously and establish networks first before sending out major expeditions. They did this by spreading north from Mexico into what is today Arizona and New Mexico, with Santa Fe being the principal settlement on the far reaches of the Spanish Empire in the Americas by the 17th century. But life wasn't easy on the frontier. Hostile raids from Apaches, Navajos, Comanches, and others, as well as the dry, unforgiving environment, hindered Spanish colonial efforts in the region. But something would drive the Spanish to once again go into the Northeast and engage in one of the first pitched battles on the plains between Europeans and native tribes. This something was the French. In 1719, during the War of the Quadruple Alliance, the Viceroy of Mexico City received a note. The frontier, both Spanish and Spanish allied native settlements, were being raided. And it was a combined effort of the French and native forces. French influence had been slowly spreading north and south from their colonies. While the French were not angels when it came to interactions with Native Americans, also participated in many brutalities and crimes against humanity, Many French settlers and officers also treated many allied tribes with some level of respect by participating in native customs, intermarriages, and frequent trading. The French wanted to expand their territorial influence and stop English and Spanish efforts in North America. Spain and France themselves had long been rivals for centuries, but they had some real beef going on during the early 1700s. In fact, from the late 15th through the early 19th centuries, the two fought with each other both directly and indirectly. Like, a lot. So when the Spanish got word that the French were up to no good again, and this time were tag-teaming with native tribes to destroy settlements and trade routes, it was a situation that had to be taken seriously. So in 1720, the governor of New Mexico, Don Antonio Valverde, was given orders to find this supposed army and either spy on it or destroy it. Now, this was easier said than done, as the Spanish barely knew the territory and frontier garrisons were extremely small. So he raised a force of about 45 Spanish soldiers, militia, and civilians, almost half of Santa Fe's garrison and convinced around 60 allied Pueblo Indians and possibly a few Apache guides to go with them. One last thing, Governor Valverde refused to lead the expedition himself and appointed his vice governor, Pedro de Villasur, as leader. Oh, and Villasur had absolutely no experience leading soldiers, by the way. Sounds like Valverde really trusted things would go well. In June 1720, Several months after receiving the news of French and Indian incursions, the Villasur expedition, as it became known, set off. About a month after setting out to the northeast, the expedition covered over 700 miles, almost 30 miles, or 48 kilometers, a day, ending up near the Platte River in Nebraska. That's insane, considering most were hauling kits, food, tents, you name it. It is here, records state, that the scouts reported a large party of armed Pawnee and Oto tribesmen several miles away. Viasur had a decision to make. He had to get more information about the force in front of him. He also presumably had an element of surprise here, as most Plains tribes were not used to seeing Spanish forces this far away from their settlements. But this is where Villasur's inexperience showed. Rather than try to either pull off a sneak attack or fall back after some closer scouting, Villasur decided that the best thing to do was to contact, you heard me right, contact the Pawnee and Atto camp and basically ask them to give up the French inside their group. He even sent over ink and paper so a written response could be given back. Needless to say, he gave up any element of surprise he might have had and also stayed in the same camp for a few days waiting for a response. The 
Pawnee and Ato eerily gave none. And worse, they showed signs of becoming more hostile as the days passed according to the accounts. Some even state that Francisco Sestaca, a Pawnee slave with the Spanish, slipped away from the camp to inform the war party of Spanish tactics and the best time to attack. But why would the Pawnee and Ato party do this? There could be a few reasons. One, the war party was just looking for a fight. Two, a sizable group of armed Spanish, Pueblos, and Apaches have entered their territory, near their villages, and are admittedly acting weird. It was probably best just to squash them. Three, the Pueblos and Apaches were already enemies with the Pawnees and Atos, and this was more of a native versus native fight, with the Spanish just happening to get involved too. Four, while Spain had technically outlawed indigenous slavery by this period, it was still widely practiced. Slaves came from either direct conflict or native slave traders, of whom tribes like the Pawnee, for example, had been some of the victims of this trade. It was revenge time. Maybe it was a combo of all of them. You take your pick. But whatever the reason, Villasur finally decided to pull back to a more defensible position. Villasur withdrew 30 miles south, past the Loop River, nearby Columbus, Nebraska today, in the hopes that the river would provide a barrier to slow down an attack. He also probably hoped the withdrawal would calm the war party. It didn't. During the night, sentries reported hearing what sounded like swimming and strange noises on their side of the riverbank, but quickly formed patrols didn't find anything. It must have been the wind. On the morning of August 14th, the war party attacked, just as the Spanish were breaking camp. A terrible fire of native muskets and arrows filled the air as the war party surrounded the camp and drove off the Spanish horses. Spaniards and Pueblos began to fall, and Villasur was killed in the first few minutes. Once surrounded, the war party likely charged in to finish off those still drawing breath. Only a few Spanish, about 10 to 14 veteran cavalry soldiers, who managed to get to their steeds before the war party got to them, and several more Pueblos who had slept a few dozen meters away from the main Spanish camp, escaped the massacre. In all, around 31 to 35 Spanish fell, along with a dozen or so Apaches and Pueblos. Nearly half of the expedition was wiped out. The survivors limped back to Santa Fe as quickly as they could. So were the French officially involved? Most likely, no. The whole expedition was probably just a very big, very bad goose chase. Some reports from the survivors say they saw French infantry alongside the native warriors, but since most fled in the first few minutes or were not directly nearby when the fighting started, it is a sketchy claim. The Pawnee and Ato warriors would have definitely known of the French and most likely traded with French merchants to acquire the muskets they used, but they may have also acquired some French clothing in trade, and some warriors could have very well been sporting their new and fancy drip during the attack, which could be a possible reason why some of the survivors say they saw the French. There is a major painting depicting the battle too, showing French participation. This was most likely commissioned by Spanish officials, maybe even Valverde himself, who would have been on the butt end of criticism over the debacle, to draw attention to Spanish bravery and away from the circumstances that placed them there in the first place. Finally, it's most likely that the French were not able, or didn't want to field an army, to cross the plains to go attack the Spanish at the time. Most major resources were being spent in Europe and the Caribbean, and not for their backwater colonial frontier. The French though, when they did hear the news, were elated. However, they also failed to make any major headway deep into the Great Plains and were content to trade with the tribes from their established colonial centers of Canada and Louisiana, while now focusing their attention to the growing power of the British to the east. The battle kept Spanish officials convinced not to explore any deeper into the American continent, and this would be the farthest the Spanish ever ventured onto the Great Plains their current holdings would be fine for now. Well, until the Russians anyway. Thank you for watching. 
And thank you to my subscribers and those of you here for the first time. You can learn more about the Spanish West and other events in history by subscribing to the channel. And please also consider supporting the channel on Patreon. And if that isn't for you, I ask kindly if you would at least like the video and share it. This is Eric the Lone Pine Wolfman, and remember, never stop learning.